Let's talk about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers because this team and Bryce Young could be poised for a breakout season. Now, this season for the Carolina Panthers was basically the season from hell. Bryce Young only had 11 passing touchdowns to 10 interceptions. And when you look at the base numbers, you'll say, okay, this kid is a bust. He's no good. They made a crucial mistake. But it isn't all black and white. When you look at Bryce Young's numbers on the season, they weren't the greatest. But at the same time, he was in a horrible situation. He got sacked 62 times on the season. And that was second most in the NFL next to Sam Howe. Now, Bryce Young is a shorter quarterback, so he's going to deal with certain limitations. Regardless of how you feel about Bryce Young, whether you think he's going to be a franchise quarterback with this franchise, or you think that he's just going to be a solid quarterback, or he's a bust, at the end of the day, NFL history has shown. From Baker Mayfield, Russell Wilson, to Frank Tarkton, who I do think Bryce Young is going to be at the end of the day. That's my comparison with him. Shorter quarterbacks do not target in the middle of the field. In order to be successful in the NFL, you have to be able to target the middle of the field at least a good majority of the time. Aaron Rodgers has gotten away with it for the last couple of years. The same with Russell Wilson in the past with the Seattle Seahawks. Not saying that Bryce Sean would just be a terrible quarterback because he can't target the middle of the field, but a good portion of his game will be limited because he is on a shorter side. But you can look at this situation with the Carolina Panthers. You now have a head coach in Dave Canales who has worked with two undersized quarterbacks in Baker Mayfield and Russell Wilson. And he's had good rapport with both of those guys. And he's gotten both of those guys to the next level, especially Baker Mayfield and with Russell Wilson with the Seattle Seahawks as well. But the biggest thing the Carolina Panthers this season was giving Bryce Young a fighting chance. Like I mentioned a couple weeks ago in that video, that's what this offseason should be called, giving Bryce Young a fighting chance. Because the wide receivers were not the best of this team. You had Adam Thielen and Jonathan Mingo and DJ Chark. DJ Chark gave us some good moments. But we all know, struggles to stay on the field. And when he's on the field, he's a run one-trick pony. Known for going deep down the field. Now, the biggest thing with this team besides the wide receivers, which I'll go more in depth in the next couple of minutes, was the offensive line. They went out there and they paid Robert Hunt a lot of money. Robert Hunt got over $100 million this season. He's going to be one of the top paid guards in the NFL. You hope that he can come in and help out this team as a whole. Because not only did the offensive line have a negative connotation on Bryce Young, it also had a negative impact on that run game. They could not run the football aggressively enough like how they wanted to and how Frank Reich attended. But when you look at this team now, bringing in a guy like Robert Hunt from the Miami Dolphins and 547 snaps played this season, he only had two penalties and he allowed one sack. He has to stay healthy and consistent with this team because basically you traded Brian Burns so you can pay Robert Hunt. Hopefully he can be good with the Carolina Panthers. You also bring in Damian Lewis from the Seattle Seahawks. 926 snaps played this season. Only allowed three sacks. You bring in both of those guys, two very good guards in the NFL, two respected guards in the NFL. You hope that Icky can benefit from playing alongside these guys because Icky at the left tackle spot has not looked good the first two seasons in his career. He's had some moments to where he's looked very good, but overall, his first two seasons, he struggled a lot. He has to play better. This offensive line, they can be very good, but Bryce Young in this offense will be only as good as his offensive line can take him. And that's crazy to say because Bryce Young is the franchise quarterback that you're hoping that he can be. You hope that he can be that guy. You did not just trade DJ Moore and all those picks for nothing. But Bryce Young has to have the right protection with this team. So bringing in these two top guards, hopefully that can help things out. And you also have Austin Corbett as well. He missed a good portion of this season dealing with a knee injury. He tried to play himself back into shape on the back half of the season. They're intending to move him to center. We will see if he can be a very good center with this team or not. But his first season with the Carolina Panthers, he looked very good when he came over from the Los Angeles Rams. You also have Taylor Moden, who is older, but he was the best offensive lineman with this team by far. I think that he will be very good as well. He did have the most pressures allowed in his career and the most sacks allowed in this season as well. That is a bit concerning. But right now, with his play, he's still a solid tackle to have, especially on this Carolina Panthers team. But when you look at this team from left to right tackle, they have to go out there and protect Bryce Young. Because he is undersized and he's not able to take those big hits over and over again. He missed one game this season against the Seattle Seahawks. He hurt his ankle. Andy Dalton came in. Andy Dalton did look good. But Andy Dalton got sacked a lot in that game as well. So the offensive line was not good enough. We can speak about coaching and all those things. At the end of the day, the offensive personnel was not good enough to get Bryce Young to the next level. 
And that was one of the things that David Tepper talked about. Well, we now have Bryce Young. He can go out there. He can make everyone better because he came from an Alabama team that did not have the most talent. The offensive line, they were okay. But you had a guy in Jameer Gibbs. That was the only legitimate playmaker that they had at, at Alabama. And it's nothing against those guys at the time because they've elevated their game since then. But it was one of those weaker Alabama teams. The hope and expectation was that Bryce Young could come straight into the league. You drop him onto the Carolina Panthers. You have this playmaking quarterback. That was not the case. So I'd look at Bryce Young's rookie season the same way I looked at Trevor Lawrence's rookie season. And if you guys listen to this channel, you know how I feel about Trevor Lawrence that rookie season. It was a rookie season from hell. The man had Urban Myers as his head coach. Bryce Young had Frank Reich as his head coach. Now, Frank Reich had some success in the NFL. But when you look at this entire situation, this kid was not going to succeed in his rookie season regardless. Bryce Young did not play the best, but at the same time, the entire offense and the offensive staff in general was not good enough. They have running backs in this team who are very solid. Chuba Hubbard is a very good running back. He averaged four yards a carry on the season, 902 rushing yards on the season, five rushing touchdowns, a very good running back with this team. He's no Christian McCaffrey, but he's a very good running back. He's the best running back on this team. He's better than Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders looked terrible this season with this team. I understand that he had the groin injury and things not going into the best situation. I fully understand that early on in the season. But at the end of the day, the only reason that Miles Sanders had a success that he had in his career is because he played with the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Philadelphia Eagles had some of the best offensive lines in the last couple of years that you can speak of. You hope that the Carolina Panthers offensive line be better and you can keep Miles Sanders around. They can't fully outright cut Miles Sanders because it's going to be an ugly cap hit. And Dan Morgan did not give him this contract. Scott Fitterer did, which is one of the many reasons why Scott Fitterer is no longer the general manager with this team. Miles Sanders on the season had 432 rushing yards. One rushing touchdown, he averaged three yards a carry. Three yards a carry. And he had two fumbles as well. And he struggled getting out the backfield. You just hope that he can be better. Will he fit... Dave Canale's system, we will see. But he was a Frank Wright guy, and he was a Deuce Staley guy as well. Deuce is now the running backs coach with the Cleveland Browns. They could possibly tag a fifth or sixth round pick to Miles Sanders and move him away on one of the draft nights. We will see. But when you look at the complete mold of this offense, they're going to be in a better situation for this upcoming season than they were last season because you are now bringing in Deontay Johnson as well via trade. You traded your second, your number two cornerback for Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson on the season, very good numbers. 717 receiving yards on the season. He missed some games this season dealing with a hamstring injury. The reason why you bring over Deontay Johnson is because he's a very good wide receiver. Now, in the past, he struggled catching the football. He may check out of games. You have to keep him engaged early on in the game. Give him screen passes. Give him slant routes. Give him post routes. Do all those things. Keep him engaged because if you don't, it's part of the reason to why the Steelers let this kid go. It isn't because he's a terrible wide receiver. They let him go because of his attitude at times and because he his motor was in question. The thing is with Deontay Johnson, it gives Bryce Young a legitimate playmaker on the outside and the inside with this team. Deontay Johnson can play in the slot. He can play in the outside. He can do the deep field catches and all those things on the sideline. He can do a lot of things with the football in his hand. Is a very good playmaking wide receiver. Can make the moves in space. He can juke this week, juke this way, juke that way, spin around. He can get you an extra 10 to 15 yards. He did that this season with the Steelers. And he was able to give put up good production on a bad Steelers team offensively because you had Matt Cannon to call in plays. Dave Canales is going to put him into the right situation. I do worry about his attitude because there will be certain plays he won't go out there and block if he's not in the game plan. But it gives Bryce Young a guy he can check the football down to for three to four yards. And next thing you know, he can make some moves in open space and get a 15 to 20 yard game. He's not a top five, not a top 10, not even a top 15 wide receiver. But he's going to be very valuable to this team. And it gives you cushion in the NFL draft. Now with that 33rd overall pick, you don't have to go out there and draft a wide receiver. I know a lot of Carolina Panther fans want to see that. But you have him. You have Adam Thielen. You have Jonathan Mingo. You need a pass rusher with that spot. We'll talk more about that later in this video with the defense. But getting Deontay Johnson, that's a minor move right now. But they can have a major impact on this team. And I like that move. I like going out there and getting him, especially what you got him for. You basically did a player for player trade. You traded off contracts. He's in a contract year. If he performs, great. If he doesn't, you can let him go. You got him for the cheap. 
But I think Deontay Johnson will be one of those wide receivers you look at and say, hey, he had a very good rapport with Bryce Young. And this is a Deontay Johnson that is still young in his career. And he's a veteran. He got to play with Big Ben. He got to be coached up by Coach Tomlin. Those are two very good things to have on your resume. The only thing that you worry about, the attitude and the drops. And he had a bad drop rate his first two years in the NFL. Since then, his hands have been very good. The hands are still a question, but they're not like how they were early on in his career. And you have Adam Thielen. Now, Adam Thielen had over a 1,000 yards this evening. That's the first thing that people look at and they say, Adam Thielen still got it. Adam Thielen got force-fed. He was the only consistent option with this team offensively. No disrespect to Jonathan Mingo and DJ Chark, but Adam Thielen is a veteran. When they signed him to that two-year deal, they did not expect for Adam Thielen to be the true number one wide receiver. They were hoping that a guy like Jonathan Mingo or DJ Chark could jump in and could be that number one option. Instead, Adam Thielen was number one option for the entire season. He was the only guy that was getting open. But when you put him in double coverage and bracket coverage, no one else could get open. You had hung corners. Look at what happened in the Detroit Lions game. Bryce Young did not read the NFL defense correctly in that game. But you had hung corners on top of Adam Thielen. So they're just having guys stack over top of Adam Thielen. No one else could get open off the press. He throws the football to Adam Thielen. He's double covered. No one else is open. And he goes for an interception. Little things like that. You can't just put Deontay Johnson in single coverage. You can press up on him. He may struggle against press every now and then. But he can find the holes in the zone coverage. He can do some things. So you go out there and get a legitimate number two wide receiver to help out Adam Thielen and help out Bryce Young. That's a great move with this team. And you have that run game, that offensive line. You have Jonathan Mingo. Mingo can be a very good wide receiver. The thing is with Jonathan Mingo, he struggled to catch the football deep down the field. And Bryce Young could give him some very good balls every now and then. He had a problem tracking the football. He didn't have a problem just going out there and just securing the football. He would turn his head around too late. Hopefully they can work on that in training camp. One thing Dave Canales has worked on with wide receivers in the past is tracking the football down deep down the field. He did that in the past with DK Metcalf. He did that with Tyler Lockett. And he's had a huge impact on those guys. Hopefully he can have the same impact on Jonathan Mingo because there's a lot of upside there. And that's the guy that got drafted with Bryce Sean. So you hope that they can work with each other this offseason and figure out those connection issues that they're having right now. So the offense is already looking better on paper. Paper doesn't always win, but it's looking better than what it looked like last season. And I know the first thing a lot of Carolina Panthers fans are going to say, we say this every single offseason, that is true. But you have a brand new coach right now, which is crazy to say this is their third new coach in the last couple of years from having Matt Rule, the Frank Wright, the Dave Canales. But you give this guy a fighting chance. You have these offensive pieces. The only thing that's different right now is that you have a quarterback that's going to be on the roster for the next couple of years if he can not perform. That wasn't the case at first when you're trading for guys like Teddy Bridgewater. You traded for a guy like Sam Darnold. Well, you signed Teddy Bridgewater. You traded for Sam Darnold. You made the trade to go get Baker Mayfield. All those days are over with. You stick with Bryce Young, you let him develop, and you hope that he can be your guy. So offensively, they do look better. They did cut Hayden Hurst. I do hope that he can get better off the field and he can return on the field one day. He got hit with a nasty concussion. He has some amnesia issues, which is just scary. If you had a concussion before, you guys know how that feel. You basically forget everything that happens after that hit. This man was starting to forget things that happened earlier in his life. So I really hope that he is okay and that he is doing well. He's set up very well financially from everything that I've read. I hope that he can make a comeback to the field, but we will see. Let's talk about the defense. I got some heat. A couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to stick to what I was saying. I said they were sacrificing defensive pieces. To help out their offense. That's what they did. Brian Burns got paid over $100 million with the New York Giants. I understand. The Carolina Panthers are not going to go out there. They were not going to pay him that money. They wanted to go out there and get some assets for him. Have no problem with that. A couple years ago. You could have had two first round picks for him. But you had Scott Fitter running the show. Part of the reason why he is no longer the general manager with this team, you now have Dan Morgan. He came in. He made that first priority. Let's get this guy out the door. Let's go out there and get a second round pick. And let's go out there and get a fifth round pick as well. You have your 33rd overall pick, which is essentially a first round pick. And you have the New York Giants second round pick as well. So you have two second round picks right now. You need to go out there and get some more draft capital from when you got bled dry by the Chicago Bears. And you traded numerous picks and DJ Moore to go get Bryce Young. It's all fine and cool. You're going to be missing some pass rush. Brian Burns had eight sacks on the season. Regardless of how people feel about Burns, he was a top defensive player with this team. He was a very good pass rusher. Right now, your best pass rusher is Derrick Brown. And Derrick Brown's a top defensive lineman. He swallows the double teams. He's going to go back there. He's going to go and 
hit the quarterback, get pressure on the quarterback. He is not known for going back there and having double-digit sacks in a season and even getting eight sacks in a season. That's not what he's going to do. He's going to go out there and stop the run, get a lot of pressure, and open up things for the guys around him. They did sign Aishon Robinson. Aishon Robinson has not recorded a sack in two seasons, people. It's been two years. He has not recorded a sack. He is not known for doing that. I fully understand that. He's known for stopping the run. But you're in a division with Kirk Cousins. You have to be able to put pressure on him with the weapons that the Atlanta Falcons have. You have Derek Hughes Carr. Derek Hughes Carr is the quarterback that he is with the Saints. He's not a horrible quarterback, but he's not a top 10 quarterback. You have to put pressure on him. Any quarterback in the NFL will make you pay if you do not go out there and put pressure on them. You also have Baker Mayfield as well, and that's the one you worry about the most because the weapons that they have with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. So they have to get a pass rusher with that second round pick. No matter how you look at it, they can go sign Jadeveon Clowney. As I record this video, they haven't done that. That's fine and cool. Jadeveon Clowney, besides this season, has not went out there and been a consistent pass rusher over and over again that can go sack the quarterback. He is known for being an elite run stopper. You need to go out there and get some pass rushers. So going out there and possibly getting a guy like Chop Robinson, I would love that move with this team. He's known for going back there and getting a lot of pressure. They're going to miss guys like Brian Burns. They're going to miss guys like Frankie Louvu as well. They try to bring back Frankie Louvu. He wanted to go play with the Washington Commanders. Got no problem with that because you replace him with Josie Jewell. Josie Jewell on the season had three and a half sacks, and he fits the Coach Ivaru system. Three sacks on the season, two forced fumbles, 60 solo tackles. Solid linebacker to have, and I do think that he's going to have better numbers this season with the Carolina Panthers because of how great Coach Ivaru is as a defensive coordinator. Yes, how great that man is as a defensive coordinator. Not good. He's a great defensive mind in the NFL, and he should be a head coach candidate after this season or for the next couple of years. And the reason why I say that, this is a Carolina Panthers team that was fourth in total defense and third in passing defense. When was the last time we saw a team have a top defense and their offense was this abysmal? Bryce Young had 10 interceptions. They turned the football over a lot at times, but yet this defense was holding it down. The players did their jobs, but it was the... The drive-to-drive drive adjustments. Usually you have defensive coordinators that will go out there and they'll make adjustments after halftime. Coach Ivaru is making adjustments on the fly, even with her, with a hurt secondary. Coach Ivaru, one of the best in the business. I love him. I trust him to figure out this entire thing, but it's only so much that he can do if he cannot get pass rush with this team. I do expect for the defense to have a bit of a drop-off. We will see. They did sign Clavon Chason. Only two sacks on the season. Nine solo tackles, has dealt with injuries in the past, is a rotational type of player. I don't expect for him to go out there and get you 10 sacks in the season. I could be wrong, but I don't expect that. He's a good depth piece to have and could be a very good starter as well, but he's not going to be that game changer with this team. They did sign Dane Jackson to be the number two corner with this team. Had five pass deflections, zero interceptions, one forced fumble. He's going to be a solid corner, not a true number one. You basically traded your number two corner to go get Deontay Johnson, so you Bringing a guy like Dane Jackson who fits the Coach Ivaru system. We'll see how good he's going to be. As long as you have J.C. Horn and you have Xavier Woods back there, the secondary is going to be in a very good spot. Coach Ivaru specializes in having the secondary defense in the first place. I trust that the secondary will be better. Like I mentioned before, it may not be the third passing defense for this upcoming season, but it should, but it should be a top passing defense in the NFL overall. But like I mentioned, I'm not backing down from it. I am worried about the pass rushers. That's what I was saying in that video. When they sacrifice defense to go help out Bryce Young, I have no problem with that. Bryce Young just has to step up. You paid Robert Hunt over $100 million. Brian Burns got paid over $100 million. You could have easily signed him to that deal, but instead you didn't. You went out there and signed the guard. Have no problem with that because you're trying to build around your quarterback. You're trying to go out there and score more points. They've had this great defense for all these years. They haven't been able to score a lick. I fully understand it. It's the cost of doing business. I'm not against it, but I'm just telling you guys, with the players they're bringing in, they're not going to have the same effect as some of the guys that has walked away from this team in free agency. They still have some very good players on this team, though. Like I mentioned, Derrick Brown, phenomenal defensive tackle. Shaq Thompson missed a good portion of this season because of something stupid that happened. We can go back and look at the first game that they had against the Saints this season, not the second game they had. He basically got taken out by friendly fire. He had his own teammate slam a Saints player down on his leg. 
And they managed to have a good defense with him being out. You hope that he can come back and he can be a very good linebacker with this team as well. You have him playing alongside Josie Jewell. And like I mentioned before with J.C. Horn, one of the top young cornerbacks in the NFL, just a phenomenal cornerback if he can stay fully healthy. Now, I do want to mention more of Bryce Young before I let you guys go in this video. Bryce Young has some moments this season that makes you shake your head and say, okay, this kid is a true quarterback that can go out there and he could possibly be a franchise quarterback. The jury is still out. Because all that stuff I said before, him getting sacked, him getting beat up, that is true. Terrible coaching as well. This is one of those situations you look at a player and you look at the team and you, you really notice how important coaching is. Bryce Young has some bad moments as well. He did have a great game against the Green Bay Packers. Unfortunately, this defense was kicking butt all season long. That was the one game they allowed 33 points and they lost 33 to 30. Bryce Young in that game was 23 of 36, 312 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. I want to put an asterisk to this game. You, the Green Bay Packers had one of the worst defensive coordinators in the NFL. And Joe Barry, he's no longer with the team. There were no adjustments until overtime in that game. No adjustments until the fourth quarter, excuse me, in that game. There were no adjustments until the fourth quarter. Bryce Young looked good. He only got sacked twice in that game, which is a credit because we all know when Bryce Young doesn't get pressured as much, he can make throws and he can go out there and he can look very good. But a lot of Panther fans want to use that game and say that was his best game against the Green Bay Packers. It was. But the Packers defense at that time was terrible, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you slice it. I want to go out there and I want to point out another game to where Bryce Young actually looked very good in and to where the defense did play very strong. The Houston Texans game, they won 15 to 13. He was 22 of 31 in that game, 235 passing yards, one passing touchdown. In that game, Bryce Young got sacked for a total of zero times. I mean, excuse me, he got sacked six times in that game. Six times. He was unfazed. That is one game, but D'Amico Ryans was coaching his butt off in that game. Bryce Young made elite throw after elite throw, and he looked good in that game. That's his best game going against CJ. Granted, the Texans were dealing with injuries, but at the same time, that offensive line was abysmal. If he did not have the mobility that he has, he would have easily got sacked 10 times in that game. Bryce Young can play at this level. But can it be consistent enough for the Carolina Panthers? And is, and is it what the Carolina Panthers are looking for? It's not good enough for Bryce Young to go out there and just be a mid-level quarterback. They didn't trade all those assets for that. This is where I'm going to be very hard on Bryce Young. And some people may disagree with this. When you trade up for a quarterback the way that this franchise did, and with me knowing the owner and David Tepper that I do know, he has to be a top five to top ten quarterback in the next couple of years. Or it's going to be a complete failure. They're not going to view him as the same. He has to come in and be that guy. Because you already see it now with certain Carolina Panther fans. They say CJ went to the Houston Texans and made that team a playoff caliber team. Granted, D'Amico Ryan's phenomenal coach. But the infrastructure with the Houston Texans was not the best. Over the last couple of years, that was a terrible team. CJ comes out, he looks like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And he does have better weapons than Bryce Young. But at the same time, he helped elevate those guys. They're going to hold Bryce Young to the same standard to go out there and elevate guys like Deontay Johnson, elevate guys like Jonathan Mingo, elevate guys like Adam Thielen in his career. That's what CJ basically did. Tank Dale's a rookie, similar to how Jonathan Mingo is a rookie. Nico Collins, solid wide receiver. This was his first season having over 1,000 yards receiving. No one knew who Nico Collins was until CJ came there. They're going to hold Bryce Young to that same type of degree. That's what they're going to do. They're going to hold him to the same type of standard that they hold CJ to. And you may say that it's a bit unfair comparing quarterbacks. Carolina Panther fans are already upset about the simple fact that the Houston Texans went out there. They got CJ. They made the NFL playoffs. And yet the Carolina Panthers were the worst team this season in the NFL. And like I mentioned before, it's not me saying it's all on Bryce Young because it's not. The teams are different. But to come on here and say that CJ went to the perfect situation is not true because he made the situation. Bryce Young is going to a situation now with the Carolina Panthers. They're building around him. He has to go out there and he has to ball out. I'm not going to come on here and back away from what I said a couple of years ago. I said that him and CJ were 1A and 1B in that draft class. It's time for Bryce Young to step up. Now the clock hits. 
We can wipe away the rookie season. We can wipe away the Scott Fitter era. We can wipe away the Matt Rule, the Frank Reichs. All that is done. The true test starts now. I don't think they're going to be a playoff caliber team. They could shock me. We will see. But at the end of the day, this upcoming season is all about Bryce Young. It's a true evaluation, similar to how Trevor Lawrence was his second season in the NFL. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about the Carolina Panthers and Bryce Young? And is Bryce Young a true franchise quarterback? And we can compare him to another quarterback with the Tennessee Titans and Will Levis. He was behind a terrible offensive line. Yes, he has DeAndre Hopkins and Derrick Henry, but his offensive line was just as bad as the Carolina Panthers offensive line. And you can say that Will Levis performed better than Bryce Young. Every quarterback develops differently, but I do believe that Bryce Young would be a very good quarterback on the other side of this. And if not, the Carolina Panthers rebuild will be extended. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers moving forward? And are they a sneaky team in this division? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last, when guys stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.